So hi, this is Gene Hammett. I'm with Core Elevation, and I've got a friend of mine that I've I've known for a while and met at a few word camps that I wanted to, to chat with. His name is Eric Wolf. Is that a beer, Eric? No, 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 <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Just kidding. It's, it, it's only two o'clock in Colorado, which means you know. Well, not I, quite. I wanted to get Eric on because I really feel like he's got a strong message for web designers, which is my primary target audience. And as you guys know, I'm a business coach to web designers, and my mission here is to help you get more impact over every project that you do and make more money. So, Eric, um, he's got an interesting background. I'm gonna let you tell him a little bit about yourself, but I'm gonna tell you what I know about Eric. He was a designer, created a solutions uh, for clients and websites, uh, but he struggled with really being able to find a way to measure success. And so over time, and we're going to find out how long, but it, he created a solution to measure success on all of the web projects he was doing and found that it was a really good solution to sell to other web designers and anybody else running a website that wants to do marketing automation and uh, tracking people that are coming into the website. So it's written two books. We may talk about those a little bit, but they're Marketing Unmasked and Blog for Business. And you can reach Eric at on Twitter at, at Eric Wolf, E-R-I-K-W-O-L-F. Hey, Eric. True things. Hey, how's it going, Gene? <laughs> That was a mouthful. Um, I leave anything out there that you want to highlight, or no, no, we're good, we're good. Well, we're going to talk about um, Orbiter.net quite a bit through this, but I want to kick off with how'd you get started into design, and what kind of struggles did you face just just being a designer? Well, I, I started in design. Um, and I know that this doesn't sound glamorous, but because I really didn't have anything else to do, I um, uh, was self-taught as, as a designer. My, um, uh, my dad is a news, newspaper publisher, and, um, and even back in the 80s, he really saw the potential of all of this desktop publishing stuff. We had the first Mac in our house. Um, uh, I had an Apple II before that. Um, had the first Illustrator, the first Photoshop. I knew how to do page layout and page maker before I was in sixth grade. So, um, uh, so I kind of grew up into it, and um, I went to a liberal arts college and uh, and realized that liberal arts isn't actually a job. <laughs> and so, when I graduated, I said, "Well, what am I going to do with myself?" And then so I. Um, and, and so I, um, I fell back on design and, um, and, uh, and I worked as a designer. I worked as, um, I worked as, uh, an art director and a production manager and later as a marketing director before, um, uh, before going off on my own. And I know we talked about some of the frustrations you had, but you were doing websites for a few years, right? And trying to track the results. Yeah, we were doing what we were doing websites and um, uh, and and marketing uh, for for a long time, and um, and one of the things that it always you know comes down to for the clients is is results. Um, I've invested this money. Um, I hired you to um, to help me do all of these things that are going to build my business. You know what's actually happening. And so, um, and so you look at things like, like Google Analytics and it's a great tool and it gives you a lot of great information, but unfortunately it, um, it doesn't get down to that individual level. Um, you know, when you would say to, to the client, you know, okay, well look, you've, you've, uh, you've gained 30% in traffic over the last six months or whatever it is, um, you know, isn't that great? And they'd say, well, yeah, but what's, you know, but, but is that making me money? Um, and, you know, we'd say, well, look, you got 10 leads this month. That sounds pretty good, right? And they'd say, oh, well, they weren't good leads. And, um, and so, and so you say, well, you know, 
well, geez, you know, we, we've increased your traffic, we're getting you more conversions, you know, how can we, if that's not making you successful, what, what possibly can be making you successful? And, um, and so one of the things that we, um, that we had started doing with clients is, you know, so instead of just saying, hey, you know, you got 10 leads this month, isn't that terrific? Um, we, um, uh, we would come armed with a, um, you know, with a spreadsheet. We'd pull out all the leads that we'd gotten through, uh, through the website and we'd say, yeah, and, and, and one of my guys would sit down with the client and go through them name by name. Okay, if these aren't good leads, let's talk about what makes them not good leads. And, um, uh, you know, and of course, what you find out as you go through it name by name is that yeah a few of these leads are misqualified but they're not all bad leads you know a couple of them do actually close and there are also a handful of sales failures in there um, you know say okay well these 10 people aren't good leads you know you're not you're not telling you the whole story so then you say okay you know these were good um, these are being mishandled on your end. You need to talk to your salespeople. You know, now we look at the ones that we say, okay, well, we're responsible for these bad leads. They're misqualified. And at that point, we get lost. So, um, so we built a very, um, a very rudimentary lead tracker for, for WordPress, which we implemented on a couple of client sites. Just so that then we could say, okay, well now we've got our misqualified leads, and apart from saying from the client telling us that they're misqualified, we've got their whole history on the site to say, okay, now every lead is telling a story, and now we can figure out maybe why they're misqualified and where we need to adjust our content in order to bring the client more success. So, and and that's really what. Um, uh, what became the impetus for Orbiter. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you a question there because I, I run a business, right? I have a mm -hmm. website. I know what's important to me. I'm looking at my Google Analytics all the time. I recently installed um, a heat map tool because I wanted to see how that, how, mm -hmm. what I could learn from that. Um, I'm, my designer said, why don't we try some A-B testing? And I said, that's great. I'm going to, to give this speech about measurement, A-B mm -hmm. testing. Are there anything else that you're measuring within your clients and to help you fine-tune the, the website itself? It, well, it, you know, it, it, it depends. Um, uh, it depends on the client because, you know, different things are, are important to different people. Right. Um, you know, for, for some clients they're really focused on SEO and just knowing that they're getting improved traffic and hopefully at a certain level of quality off of certain keywords that makes them happy. Um, some clients it's, it's straight up, you know, we want conversions, you know, some clients are, are looking at, at sales. Um, there's an e-commerce goal or if you're working with a nonprofit, there's, um, there's donation goals that need to be met. <clears throat> So, um, so we're looking at, you know, depending on, on what the client is uh, and what they do and what's important to them, you know, you, you sort of have to be measuring, um, measuring different things. One, one of the things that, that we've started doing with a lot of folks is, um, is really trying to um, isolate specific campaigns as much as possible. Uh, use a landing page, for example. Uh, that way you can say... You know, you, you look at, at things that, uh, that a lot of clients do. Um, you know, some of them are still in the yellow pages. Um, some of them do direct mail. Some of them are going to be in your neighborhood coupon book. You know, it all depends on, on what the industry is and, um, uh, and what they're doing. Email is obviously really important. Um, and so whenever there is a specific campaign, a specific call to action, what we try to do is encourage folks to use landing pages and quarantine that traffic as best they can. Right. So you can uh, analyze those to, in detail and change things. And it, it, exactly, and and you can say, um, and you can say, well, you know what, um, your uh, 
you know, we can say fairly definitively that, that your Yellow Pages ad only generated this much traffic this month and, um, and that traffic got us X conversions. Um, you know, we'll, we'll take those pages, we'll block them from search engines and, and really try to, you know, as best as we can. It's not a never 100%, but try to isolate that traffic. Right. Well, that's, that's a good, good thing to bring up about the isolation of, of certain pages so that you can improve them. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that too many web designers rely just on Google Analytics. Analytics is great. I mean, the, you know, as, and especially for a, a free tool, there are very few things in the world that are more useful than analytics. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's incredible and it's even gotten better. Um, just uh, spending an hour in analytics, you can learn an incredible amount of information. But the, but the thing about analytics is that it doesn't give you the whole picture. It shows you, it's sort of like... Um, if you want to, if you're looking at your business, you know, forget the web stuff. If you're looking at your business, and Gene, I'm sure that you do this, um, you know, there, there are different levels that you look at your business. If you want to say at the end of the month, how am I doing? Um, you know, you can look at your, and there, and there are a lot of different things that you're going to look at. You're going to look at your overall financials. You're going to, um, you know, you're going to, close your books and you're going to look at your, um, uh, at your balance sheet. You're going to look at your, your cash flow statement for the month and you're going to say, okay, Hey, this looks, this looks pretty good. But of course that's at a macro level. Um, if you really want to understand, you've also got to see, you know, okay, well what's going on with, um, you know, how many new leads have I gotten this month? Uh, what kind of web track have, have I, traffic have I gotten? Let's look on an engagement by engagement level and say, oh, well, you know, I increased my business with this guy, but my business decreased with this person. Why is that? And so analytics gives you that really great kind of macro view, like your, um, you know, like, like your financial statements do, but you also need to understand the micro level. Right. And that means, um, and that means in a lot of cases, understanding how specific people use your website. Um, understanding, um, uh, understanding the indicators that might separate somebody from being a quality lead or a low quality lead. Um, uh, you know, understanding, you know, really what people see when they open your web page. That's you know, that's the um, the piece that that tools like Crazy Egg with the with the heat mapping do. Right. Um, and and if you really want to understand this stuff, really, what you need is you know, is, is that holistic view because analytics doesn't tell you the whole story. Analytics, you know, basically shows you your website as if you're looking down on it from an airplane. Well, let's talk a little bit about Orbiter because I want to make sure that we do cover that. Um, tell us exactly what it does in, in, in 60 seconds. In 60 seconds. Am I on the clock? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Three, two, one. Okay, so Orbiter is essentially a, um, a marketing automation, inbound marketing platform for WordPress. We've got a lot of tools built natively into your WordPress install. We track every single person that comes to your website. We monitor those that are converted to leads and let you know that you know it's not visitor 4587 anymore. Now it's Gene Hammett. And we're going to show you what Gene Hammett does. We let you segment your leads based on either who they are and what they do. Uh, I've got 35 seconds still. Um, we, um, we let you create automation based on that. We let you um, customize the content on your website based on who's looking at it. And, um, and we have tools for, for landing pages and, uh, and email marketing uh, and a couple of other things. And, and we also integrate with Zapier, which allows you to share the data that we help you gather with hundreds of other web services. Oh and yeah, so, I remember you talking about that in Chicago. I gotta, I gotta talk to you about that because I've been using Orbiter for a few months now, and I really love the ability to be notified that a lead is on my website. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, I don't use it in a creepy way, but I really do love the fact that that I can see who's reading what and what they're reading, 
and uh, I can absolutely. respond to that. As opposed to that, that granular level or that, that top level from Google Analytics that says, you had 14 people visit this page today. Right. <laughs> Um, so, you know, now you know that it's, um, you know, now you know that the person that, that visited that page or one of the 14 was Jane Smith, who you've been pitching for the last three months. And you know that after that page, she looked at three others and you maybe have been pitching Jane Smith for three months and, you know, maybe you just haven't been able to turn the corner, but now you've got that, um, you know, but now you've got that intelligence that says, hey, she's thinking about you. Maybe you should give her a call. That's what it does for me in my business. It gives me insight into who I should focus and prioritize my call, my follow up with, whether mm-hmm. it be email or a phone call. So um, that's exactly how I'm using it. Um, I'm and- actually getting, uh, I'm going to do MailChimp here soon, and I'm going to be using some of those features integrated with MailChimp. So, so, so yeah, we'll be, um, you'll be auto responding and, yeah. And, um, and all that stuff. I mean, it's it, it's pretty neat because you can take the you, so you can take that that visit, and the really um, and and the funny thing is is that you know we, we start all this with somebody coming to your website, um, an action that for most of us is completely invisible. You know, we don't know that Jane Smith came to the site unless she calls us up and says, you know, hey, Gene, I was just on your site and guess what I found? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so, so now, now we see that and we're able to do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Um, so in addition to, to triggering that email notification, uh, things that we can do are, um, you know, so Jane Smith comes and visits a particular page. Well, we could use that to trigger adding her to a MailChimp list. We could um, we could use that to trigger uh, pulling her off of another MailChimp list. We could use that to trigger a um, uh, a task for the sales manager in Salesforce. We could use that to to trigger a note in Evernote. Um, there are a lot of things that you know we can do just just to say to however it is that you like having that information, hey, it's time to follow up. Yeah. And for the lead, being able to um, uh, being able to basically um, start responding to her based on factors that are completely invisible to, to her and, um, and things that you've set up in advance like Ron Popeil. Um, you set and forget an autoresponder that's tied to a certain page, and when a known lead gets there, you know, boom, they're added to that list. Next day, they get an email. Really, really easy and, and powerful stuff. Um, and uh, and then based on that visit, we can also then um, uh, then customize calls to action based on what we think she's on the verge of buying. Just change change the website to to suit her needs as we perceive them. That's really cool. You know, it's worth bringing up this point, and you might not want to talk about money, but the pricing for this sounds like it's really expensive, and it sounds like it's really hard. It but, is outrageously expensive. <laughs> um, I, no, I know. No. Um, but the pricing that you have is less than a tenth of what some of the other solutions out there are doing, um, and I don't know if you like to mention their names, but uh, tell us a little bit about how you price this and how you are going after the market? Well, we, um, so marketing automation and inbound marketing tools, whatever you want to call it, um, generally are priced anywhere from $500 a month to $3,000 a month. And, um, uh, and, and things about, about those platforms, and they're great platforms. I'm not going to say anything disparaging about, um, about these, these big tools. They're, they're great tools for a certain type of business. Mm-hmm. Uh, HubSpot, Marketo, Pardot, uh, Eloqua, fo- folks like that. Um, you're uh, you're going to get a really you know, big high-end piece of software. Um, the problem is that when you're a small business, you're already running short on, uh, obviously, money, time, 
and human resources. Um, very often uh, with, with these packages, you're talking about you know at least a year's worth of a contract, several thousand dollars setup engagement, and then at the end of that, you really need to have almost a dedicated person just running those systems. Right. Um, you know, they, they can be really prohibitive on the, on, on the small business scale. Um, I've got clients who are more in the, you know, towards the high end of the M and SMB. And, and um, I've, got, I've got one client who pays um, uh, more than $30,000 a year for Marketo and, um, and pays a full-time employee probably in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 grand a year. So total cost of ownership, about 100 grand a year for Marketo. And he's totally happy, mm-hmm. but not all of us have um, not all of us have that luxury to say, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know drop uh, fifty thousand or a hundred thousand total cost of ownership on on inbound marketing. Right. So so we thought that that a few things were were important. Um, uh, price is important. Total cost of ownership is important. Um, the ability to um, the ability to run it, you know, really part time, um, uh, and the ability to not get tied down. Um, we wanted you to be able to keep ownership of your data and, and use it the way that you want. So, um, so we price our um, we price our software at about a hundred dollars a month, ninety nine a month, uh, seventy nine a month for nonprofits, and. Um, uh, and when you factor in the costs of you know other things that you may want with it, for example, a Mailchimp subscription, a Zapier subscription, um, they have a free option and a paid option. Um, you know, perhaps you've got a CRM that you really like, Salesforce, HiRise, Zoho. Those are pretty popular with our clients. Um, you know, we want you to basically be able to build that ecosystem and be more in the total cost of ownership of one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars a month. Yeah. That's what I've seen when I'm using it. Um, when, when you're putting these solutions together, though, I'd ask you before in Chicago, hey, it, who is this for? And I, I was really surprised by your answer because it's not for big business, really. I mean, they can use it. But even smaller no. businesses that have as little traffic as I have get if, a lot of value out of this. You know, at the, end, at the end of the day, I mean, even if you take a – you know, let's say let's say we put it at the high end, and and let's say you've got Salesforce. Let's say you're paying for Zapier, you're paying for Orbiter, you're paying for Mailchimp, um, and let's say you've got a total cost of ownership here of about two hundred dollars a month, and you know an overhead just to run this stuff. So that's twenty four hundred dollars a year. Even somebody with a small business, one guy sitting in his office. Um, all you need is 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 help closing one more deal, right? And you've more than paid for the entire year. And what it does is is it creates an ability to prioritize the people that are in your pipeline. Uh, absolutely, because it, it, um, I could I have you know a lot of people on my list, but I can actually prioritize how I follow up with people based on the patterns I see from Orbiter. Uh, absolutely. Um, absolutely, it, it really helps. And even even when you think about something as simple as sending an email newsletter, right. um, you send an email newsletter, and, and um, you know maybe you've got a thousand people on your list, just to use a nice round number. Um, you've got a thousand people on your list, and um, you send out your newsletter, and let's say forty five people click through and end up on your site. Um, and MailChimp shows you all that. And of course, now you've got a list of 45 people who clicked. But beyond that, you don't have the intelligence to know which of those 45 are most interested in what you're saying right now. Yeah. So now you take that information and you combine it with, you know, sort of like that, you know, it's, it's the same thing with, with the, um, you know, looking at the, the macro micro. Um, now... You can see which of the forty-five are um, are the most important because you can tell the difference between somebody who clicked through, read the one page, and left, 
and the person who visited eight pages after that. Yep. Absolutely. I've got to bring this up too because most of the people watching this are probably going to be web designers because that's who I work <laughs> with and developers running small agencies. This tool can be a really amazing for them to track their own success with the projects they have. And the client will, will be paying for that monthly fee. It's not the web designer. So we've got, um, uh, yeah, it's um, for, for web designers, there, there are a lot of ways that um, that we like to work with web designers. I mean, first of all, you know, yes, absolutely. Um, put your clients on it. It's an opportunity to to help them make the most out of their web investment because you're helping them get that intelligence. Um, and there's also an opportunity to sell add-on services like um, uh, like training, management, um, uh, all sorts of other consulting that you can do with your clients. You know how do you you know you've got this data. How do you use it? How do you set up an autoresponder campaign now based on these factors? So, so there's a lot of ways that that um, that we can help web designers build that bridge between being one and done on a project and actually having an ongoing engagement with a with a client. Um, That's exactly what I tell them. Um, that you know they want to make more money, right? And, and they don't. They want to work with better clients, and the better clients are the ones that see websites not just as a project but as this is going to evolve over time we're going to mm -hmm. maintain this we're going to continuously improve it and when you get clients that see that way this tool and some of the other tools can be great to continuously improve their website so that it gets more results and you're going to look better you're going to get more referrals and it's going to be easier for you to package those up into a case study or package them up into telling stories so that you can get more clients. A absolutely, and and you're also, um, you know, you're you're also in, in some ways creating a competitive advantage for yourself because you're demonstrating to, um, you know, to the client like, hey, not only can I get this website done in WordPress and and make it awesome and yeah you'll have gravity forms and you'll have the SEO plugins and oh yeah it'll be great you're you're actually giving them the tools to say to say hey we can make it so that you're following up with all of your leads automatic automatically we're going to set it up where um, uh, we're going to set it up where you get an email when a hot lead comes back to your site right. and you know all of these things you know if you, when you get the client that says that says, hey, my website is part of my sales process, that's gold. I, I totally agree with you because I, I see the struggles with so many clients going after someone who just wants a website. And, and granted, there's, there's work out there for those, those people, but find clients that really want to transform their business. Um, I actually had one of my friends tell me this, and he goes, there's a complete difference in, in someone who looks at it as just a website, a project, and the one that looks at it, is, is it really going to change the way I interact with my customers? Mm -hmm. And measuring success, in my opinion, is absolutely critical, not only for business owners, but for website designers. A hundred percent. If you're not... If if you've got somebody who and look if if somebody just wants a website and you know they don't care about any of this stuff they they want a website and and I've had plenty of clients who basically um, you know are the kinds of folks who you know um, you know bless them but but they um, you know if they had the choice they wouldn't participate in the internet at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have a they, they have a website because they have to. They have an email newsletter that they never send because because they feel like they have to. They have a Facebook page because they have to. And all of this you know web nonsense is is something that they'd rather not participate in. Um, you know when you have those folks, you know I say hey you know you know let them find the fastest cheapest solution out there. You know let them let them go to the to the you know, guy sitting in his basement charging five hundred bucks for the out of the box theme, 
you know, yeah, I'll change your logo in one of the colors. You know, let, let them get that. If um, if web designers want to make money, they're going to, to, to go for deeper relationships with their clients, um, get clients that, that are going to, um, you know, really view it as a partnership. Um, you know, you've got, I've got knowledge about my business. You've got knowledge about the web and, and how I can meet my goals, which are X, Y, Z. You know, let's put all that together and do something great. Absolutely. So we've talked about a lot of things. Um, I want to make sure we wrap this up because I want to be respectful of your time. Measuring success, I mean, it is a 10 out of 10 in my, my opinion. Um, not only for those business owners, but, but for web designers. And Google Analytics is, when I've done some surveys, is the primary choice of, of, of anyone measuring that, that flow, but it doesn't give you the full picture. Yeah, it's, and, and nothing does. Um, right. you know, you're, you're, you're not going to find, um, I mean, it'd be, it would be great if, you know, if for next to nothing we could get, you know, all of this stuff wrapped up into, you know, wrapped up into one, but, but it, it, it's not really out there. You're not going to do for, for that big picture, you know, why not use Google analytics? It's great. Yep. It's free. It's always being updated. Um, there are a lot of folks who can, um, who can help you read that. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to do better than that. It is, uh, but there are other tools out there. So if you're, yeah. if you're not looking at the heat maps, if you're not looking at, um, a B testing tools, you're really not putting everything you can into measuring the success that you that you need to. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, the one thing about A B tools, um, which I which I do like, um, the the one thing to be careful of, um, which fundamentally a lot of people, you know, don't understand at first is is don't subdivide your traffic too much. What you're looking for is, I mean, what we're always looking for in online marketing, you know, so it's the, you know, it's the macro level and the micro level. But on the macro level, you know, those stats don't mean anything if they're not statistically significant. Yeah. So if, if you've got, if you've got 20 people on your website, you're not going to learn def anything definitive by sending 10 of them to, to one landing page and 10 of them to a different one. You know, you've really got to get the numbers. Right. If you don't have, if you don't have big numbers, and you're a long way from getting big numbers, A/B testing might not be the thing to do. Um, if you've, if you've got good traffic, then absolutely take the time and 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 A/B test landing pages, A/B test emails. Um, you've got that. You've got that luxury, and you absolutely should use it. Heat mapping is great. Um, you know, you, you, um, when, you know, any good web designer is designing their sites based on a hierarchy of information, um, you know, what's most important, what's, you know, what's less important and heat maps are a great visual way to tell you if you got that. Yeah. Um, you know, Hey, we're, we're getting a lot of attention over here and we don't know why. Um, maybe we should alter the design. Maybe we should make that less prominent so that the attention can be here. And so there's, there's a lot of, um, heat mapping gives you a lot of stuff that, that no other analytics do, you know, and then of course using the individual, um, uh, you know, bringing in what actual individuals do and how they use your site, you really get a whole lot of information in that spectrum. You do have to use a few different tools to get all that. Um, so at you, this mentioned, point, you mentioned uh, a few different tools. What other tools do you like? Um, and since we're talking about WordPress, is there specific to WordPress for measuring success? Well, for um, uh, things that I like, uh, I like um, uh, I like Gravity Forms a whole lot. Uh, one of the things that Gravity Forms does is um, uh, basically it, it measures um, the conversion rate of every single form, and you see that when you go to your form editor, it's very visible. It's um, uh, it's a good thing to 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 just kind of keep an eye on. Um, uh, so I like that a whole lot. Yeah. Um, there's a um, there's a great tool 
Now this, well, this one isn't WordPress, but, but for heat mapping, my favorite is crazy egg. Okay. Um, uh, there are a couple of, um, there are a couple of analytics plugins that I, um, uh, that I like for WordPress. Uh, MailChimp actually has a great one. Um, I think they call it analytics 360 and they, um, uh, and basically what they do is they bring your analytics data right into WordPress and you see it on a chart where not only do you, do you see your analytics, but they mark the, um, the places where you've done an email campaign. So you can see, okay, well, we had a spike here because of this email. That one was successful. We sent out this email. We didn't get that much of a spike. You know, maybe, maybe that message wasn't as successful. Right. Um, you know, it's a great visual thing to do where, where, where you can actually, um, you know, have that visual reminder of, of, Hey, this is my traffic and this is my email and this is how they're, they're associated. Um, I also like, um, I also like Jetpack a whole lot. Uh, Jetpack has, I mean, actually Jetpack has a lot of great stuff that a lot of WordPress users should be looking at. Uh, but one of the things that I do like about Jetpack is, um, is that they have their own analytics uh, that comes with that, and um, and that pops up right in your WordPress dashboard, and it's um, I, you know, and that's a good thing to to watch too. Um, no analytics tool is infallible, and so um, you know, and so it's it's good to kind of you know check things and um, you know make sure there aren't any major discrepancies. Right. That um, that you're that you're missing somehow between analytics and Jetpack, you know, is, is something is something out of whack. It's it's really hard to tell when your analytics is broken. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, let me ask you a question as we're wrapping this up. When you have all this stuff that you're measuring, how do you use it to get more clients? You know, we always um, so. We look at the um, at the sales funnel from the bottom up, okay. Um, because fundamentally, the, the the money is at the bottom. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Okay, here's you know, here's how online marketing works. I've got my sales funnel, and I put people on top. A few fall out the bottom as leads, and hopefully, I close a you know a good number of those." And so they say, okay, so now if I want to get more leads, what I've got to do is I've got to load the top of that funnel with as many people as possible. And so they spend money on SEO, they spend money on social media, and, you know, and then they say, well, why don't I have more leads? Well, the, um, the, the issue is, is that, well, you're just, you're just shoving traffic into the system. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't improved your conversion rate. Right. Um, you haven't you haven't improved your close rate, and so um, and so what what we try to focus on you know is the bottom of the sales funnel because you know the money is at the bottom, and so we want to improve our conversion rate. Um, we want to um, uh, we want to be trying different things with our with our layout when it seems to make sense. We want to be um, uh, we want to be trying different offers for different people. We want to, um, uh, you know, we want to use our social channels strategically to try to get, um, you know, try to get as many leads as we can, as opposed to just, you know, you know, more traffic. It's not just about more leads; it's quality leads, right? Well, it's it's quality, and um, you know, and of course, improving improving the close rate too, which is so so you know so so we we look at it bottom up. We want to look at. Um, we want to look at the conversions and and you know where we're going right and where we're going wrong with that. We want to do our best to improve that. And so over time, as we get more traffic into the system, you know when you, when you do the math, you you figure out that you do so much better trying to improve your conversion rate and then improve the traffic as opposed to vice versa. I want to get specific here. Wh when you know how to improve someone's business because you've been working with with clients and tracking these leads and tracking sales you can probably give very specific conversion rates right 
of, of, of successes that you've had, that a client was at this place and now they're, they're at this place and that means uh, an X percent increase in business, right? Uh, absolutely. We've, um, you know, for, um, you know, for B2B firms, you know, a lot of it is, is going to be, um, uh, a lot of it is going to be uh, using that content. You know, everybody's looking for information. Right. And so on, um, you know, great example is we had a, um, we had a client who was getting a disproportionate uh, amount of search engine traffic on a specific page on their website. Okay. Just, just immense. I mean, you know, in some months it was a fifth of their total traffic, which, which was not insignificant. Um, but they weren't getting any leads. And so, you know, we said, okay, you know, these are folks who are coming from a search engine to a specific page for a specific purpose. We need to change the call to action. We need to, we need to make it, uh, we need to make it more obvious. We need to make it more enticing. We've got to make sure that people convert. Um, uh, now that page has a 2.2% conversion rate. Um, which is pretty darn good, considering you know, considering that we're talking about um, you know Google traffic with a fairly high bounce rate. Right. We've you know we've harnessed that into you know into real leads, um, uh, you know, and then taking that person who's come to that page looking for that specific thing, and then. Um, and then extending that through the rest of the site by way of our orbiter tools, and so we're 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 still pushing that content even after they've left even after they've left the page. So a lot of things to do there. We've um, we've had exper- we've had um, a lot of experience lately in working with um, in working with nonprofits, um, and uh nonprofits are becoming a significant part of our business we um we actually give away a uh, a license of orbiter every month to a to a nonprofit um and what we found is that surprisingly um even when you've got a nonprofit that that relies heavily on things like donations we um we actually see a lot of nonprofits that really aren't very good at asking for money <laughs> And, um, and so, um, and so doing email marketing campaigns and, and having specific asks and, um, and, you know, driving to the landing page and, um, you know, it, it, it's surprising what people will, uh, what people will do when, when you actually ask them. So when you tell those stories to get other nonprofits, it's probably easier. Uh, yes, ab- ab- absolutely. <laughs> um, um, you absolutely. know how I feel about niching. So. Um, is this becoming one of your niches or uh, something you're really focusing on for your business? Uh, yeah, nonprofits. Um, nonprofits are um, are a great uh, are a great uh, channel for us, and we've been. Do you have a sector of nonprofits, or is it? Well, you know, we um, we well, we tend to work more with local nonprofits as opposed to folks that have a big national presence. Okay. Um, and it, and I think it just speaks more to, um, you know, the size of the organization as opposed to the, you know, as opposed to the scope, you know, like businesses, there's an enterprise level of nonprofits as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they're going to be great candidates for, you know, some of the bigger tools that, that we've talked about. Um, but, uh, but, you know, you've got these small organizations doing good work that, you know, can't get all this work done and they need help making it, uh, you know, ha- making it happen and making it happen easier. Um, so, so that's been a good one for us. Um, and, and, uh, another niche has been, um, uh, sort of unexpected has been e-commerce. Okay. As it re- using with Orbiter or? With, with Orbiter. Okay. Um, with Orbiter, um, and, and primarily because, um, because we're watching people's behavior as they use the site, we're able to detect things like cart abandonment in, in, you know, in close to real time. And so, you know, where, where that person and their revenue has been, you know, 
lost, essentially. They came to the cart and they didn't finish the transaction. Um, and, and people who own e-commerce stores, you know, stay up nights thinking about this. Right. I, um, I, I ran an e-commerce business for nine years and I had no way at that point of tracking, uh, tracking abandonment. So, and I was, I was spending, you know, anywhere from 10 to 25,000 a month in PPC. And I was looking for, you know, I was, I was doing my own landing pages cause I couldn't find emails to do them for me right? because they didn't know more than I did. And I was trying to figure out how I could move from one and a half percent to 2%. Because exactly. I knew that as much traffic as I was driving, um, that that would be an extra $5,000 in every month. And that was so my let's goal. Say, <laughs> so, so let's say you've got a, um, let's say you've got somebody who, um, you know, returning customer comes to the site, is clearly thinking about making a purchase, doesn't go through with it. Well, maybe the next morning they get an email from you um, with a yeah. special offer. Um, uh, if um, if someone is um, is not in the system, they're they're just a visitor. They're not a known uh, they're not a known lead. Uh, we can uh, allow you to customize the content based on abandonment. Where if somebody comes to the site and um, and doesn't complete the checkout, maybe we start making some of our calls to action a little bit more aggressive. Maybe we talk about our satisfaction guarantee. Maybe we talk about. Um, uh, maybe we bring out more endorsements at that point. Um, maybe we offer 10% off. You know, who knows? But, but the ability just to take that behavior and turn it into – and essentially turn it into an opportunity and not just, you know, hey, we're, you know, we're done with this person. They're gone. What I hear you saying that behind that, Eric, is being able to track it at that level with Orbiter – allows you to test those things to see what will work for future customers uh, absolutely, and, and to create automation behind that so that you don't have to sit there and do it yourself which absolutely small businesses just don't have time to sit there and wait look at these whatever is coming in and then and keep following up with people after every visit to the website no it, it, it's it's very much set it and forget it you want to be able to we have limited time this is this is the kind of thing where hopefully, um, you know, you put together a campaign, and and it takes a while to become to get to that point where you're you know 100 percent automated. Yeah, I uh, want to talk to you about setting up my own campaigns because I'm excited about it. I'm moving over to Mailchimp, and I'm going to ask you one more question. Yeah, hit me. So, what would you tell the website designers that? are typically only looking at Google Analytics as their measurement tool. So uh, for, so for their own businesses or for their clients? Well, for their clients. And, and I want you to use this lens of so they can increase their own business, so they can get more clients, and maybe it's the right clients. Um, is that a too difficult question? No. Um, so, so first of all, um, I think that the first important thing is to really understand what's important to the client and to make sure that when you're generating any sort of report and analytics that you're doing it in such a way that that it's going to be meaningful to, you know, to their goals. You know, a lot of people will just say, "Hey, look, here's an analytics dashboard, isn't this great?" and there's no connection between what you're looking at and why you're looking at it. Right. Except to say, hey, this is data and it's, and it's fantastic. Um, and so, free. So, <laughs> so, and free. So, so number one, you know, make, make sure that the goals are understood and make sure that, that, that the numbers that you're choosing to show um, further that goal. And then, that, um, and then beyond that, that the client understands what they're looking at. Um, you know, most small business owners never see analytics before their web person shows it to them. And so, um, you know, and so there, there's a missed teaching opportunity in a lot of cases to say, hey, this is what this stuff means and this is how you should be reading it and this is what you should be thinking about. 
you know, and then beyond that, taking, um, uh, you know, taking samples of uh, what Orbiter allows you to do to um, to uh, complement that is we can segment people based on their behavior. There are going to be certain pages, certain behaviors that are innately, you know, more potentially profitable. If somebody comes to your website because they use a certain search keyword, if someone comes to your website and visits more than 10 times, if someone comes to your website and visits a specific page or one of a couple of pages, you know, there are certain behaviors that, that signal, you know, hey, we're getting close to money here. And, um, and so being able to, 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 to segment that behavior and then sample the, the browsing histories of actual individuals as opposed to averages, very powerful stuff. Every person tells a story. Yep. And I told you I wouldn't ask another question, so I'm going to add to what you're saying there. When you do, when you put all this together for your clients and you make those changes, then you've got to package it up in a way to tell others. Because if you just keep it for you and your client, and, and I'm not saying divulge names, but I've got an increase of 10% here for this client because of working with me over the last six months. And uh, Absolutely. Over a continuous period, not because I put up a website and it just sat there and, and had an increase. Um, and and you know, and here's the other thing that that a lot of um, you know that a lot of us in the web marketing field need to to learn is, um, you know, we we can't do the the shoemaker's children thing. We we've got to you know eat our own dog food, so to speak. <laughs> and, Absolutely, um, gotta hear so, that so much. And so you know, you need you you need to be looking at your own stuff the way that you recommend looking at your client's stuff and you need to, you know, and you need to, to set these things up, you know, you're going to, you know, if, if a client, if you say to a, to a client, um, Hey, I'm going to, um, I'm going to recommend that you do an autoresponder campaign and let me show you a really easy way to write the emails. Uh, the next time you answer that frequently asked question in your Gmail, you know, save a copy copy it and paste it over here and now it's an autoresponder and we can use it for everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to do that stuff yourself. Uh, you know, when you, when you write that email to your client and outline all the bullet points of what you've accomplished in the last three months, you should take that, grab it, and turn it into a blog post. Of course, you know, you know censoring any <laughs> confidential information, right. of course. But you know, but 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 you got to do the work and you've got to practice what you preach. Um, There's not you know, a whole lot of marketing going on within design companies for themselves. No, no, <laughs> and not, not typically. I've I've got theories around that, and a lot of that goes back to they're not really clear about the audience they serve. They're they're not clear about the audience they serve, and and they also, you know, like like many small businesses fall into that trap of, of, you know, riding the roller coaster, you know, you know, Hey, I'm really busy. I don't have time to market. And then it's like, Oh my God, I've got no business. I've really got to market. And, you know, and then you're right. And, and, you know, you should be, um, you know, you should be marketing all the time, not so that you can get overloaded when you're busy, but so that you know that, that you can, um, that you can, get business to replace this project when it ends and you know and it should be a, it should be a continuous thing as opposed to you know riding a roller coaster it's also easier agree. to do when you're doing it continuously I, I agree with you Eric well this has been great I'm going to put this together I'm going to put it up on the website I'm going to put some links in here to orbiter.net and I'm going to spell that just so you guys know it's O-R-B-T-R dot net I joke with you. I feel like I need to buy a vowel. There you go. Um, and I accept major credit cards. <laughs> uh, you can reach Eric at, on Twitter at, at Eric Wolf, E R I K W O L F. And I'll put that on, on the page. And Orbiter's a great tool. I personally use it. I do um, 
I know there's a lot more it can do for me. And I look forward to exploring that with you, Eric, over the next few months because I want to track the people coming to my website so that I can better serve them, you know, not necessarily just sell, but, but increase the value of my website. Well, very cool. I'll be happy to help you with that. All right. Well, uh, talk to you soon, Eric. Thanks, Gene. Bye. Bye.